Very happy that today we had a wonderful time with Mr. Mohana. We hope to take this to the next level. We hope to make more events like this for the growth of Acturio. Personally, I would recommend each and every student to participate in these seminars to gain more experience and to learn from different professionals. People who have already gotten far in this profession to help us in nurturing the students so that we can achieve what we first thought when we chose this actual profession. So as we could in one way or another be having a head start on the path that we are taking and we are going to embark on the next five to ten years to help our region, our country and the world as professionals certified actuaries. Hello everyone, my name is Akida Kambasila, the moderator of today's webinar with the topic of uh, actuarial science and professionalism to be presented by Mr. Mohana, Ibrahim Mohana. Uh, Mr. Mohana will be joining us from Lebanon. Uh, some of us are here at IFM who will be joining who will be joining Mr. Mohana as well as different people from different parts of uh, Africa as well as the Middle East. Well, our webinar session, the main speaker will be Mr. Mohana, but uh, after his presentation we will have the questions. People with the questions will have to ask if there are any questions and uh, we'll drop them in the chat box. It's, uh, I'll talk a little bit about Mr. Mohana before he starts speaking so that you can know who our speaker is. Mr. Ibrahim Mohana he has a qualified actually and has been working as an actuary for about 40 years, over 40 years. He's a fellow of, of actuarial professional bodies. He's a fellow of the Institute and Faculty of Actuaries of the United, of the United Kingdom as well as the fellow of the Lebanese Associ Actuary Association as well as the fellow of Cyprus Actuary Association. He's a member of SIS, uh, Swissland Actuary Association, but we are really proud to have him also as the fellow member of the AST, the Actuary Society of Tanzania. Uh, so from Mr. Mohana, we're expecting a very wonderful presentation uh, coming from his experience as well as qualification. Thank you very much. Let us be together throughout this session. Thank you, Akida. Good afternoon to everybody. And I'd like to congratulate everybody on this wonderful uh, National Day in Tanzania. Uh, let me uh, start by thanking Akida for giving me this opportunity. And I would like to tell you that there are a few uh, actuarial staff from our office in Beirut uh, joining uh, the meeting, uh, primarily for them to have a feeling with the other actuarial students in Tanzania, I did promise uh, Akida that we will arrange one day to have uh, a joint uh, meeting with the students at the different universities of Lebanon with Dar es Salaam, University of Dar es Salaam and IFM. But that will be, we would need to organize it. Also we have with us is Dr. Badran, who is a full professor at the Lebanese University teaching actuarial science. Uh, he's been uh, an actuary, he has a, a PhD in actuarial science, been teaching actuarial science. And uh, also we would like him to contribute with us if he like on this evening, on this uh, presentation or later on. So uh, uh, welcome everybody. And thank you Akira for all the logistics. And uh, I do so, I'm sorry that uh, I couldn't be with you in person today in Dar es Salaam. So let me share my screen and we can proceed. Uh, in my presentation, uh, although it is uh, primarily talking about actual science and, uh, and professionalism, I did take the uh, opportunity 
to make four slides about Mohanna and company and Mohanna Foundation for you guys to understand who is this guy talking to you and why is this person talking to you? And then we'll go into the profession. So you realize like uh, what Akida mentioned, he said, I've been uh, in business for 40 years. As a matter of fact, I qualified almost 45 years ago. And, uh, and I'm still, I feel I'm still young when I'm surrounded by people like you guys. So Mohana and company started 35 years ago in Cyprus. And now we moved into 38 different countries. Uh, as offices, we have Cyprus, Lebanon, and Tanzania. And we try to serve uh, the region from uh, these offices. And I would like to mention that Tanzania is a major hub. Lebanon has been an instrumental country producing actuaries and servicing the Middle East area. And I hope Tanzania will take uh, that position for East Africa. You know very well that Kenya for the past uh, 10, 20 years and South Africa have been the main hub for actuarial services. There is no reason in my opinion where Tanzania, you, you young Tanzanians don't uh, uh, have uh, that objective to start working actuarial science, providing actuarial services in East Africa and beyond. As far as Mohanna Foundation, it is some of you probably are aware, we are a nonprofit organization. Initially, it started to provide actuarial education in many, many countries, as far as Siberia, Bratislava, Riga, Minsk, in East uh, Europe, as well as the Arab world. And uh, you can see more information about the foundation uh, from our website. Now, let's talk about actuarial science. And if you notice the name of the presentation is actuarial science and professionalism. Uh, I'm not here in this uh, presentation going to be talking about what you are getting educated at universities. What I'm after here is to talk to you about things that you are not being educated about, what you are not really being told why a mathematician who can be a great mathematician or a statistician or a econ economist do not belong to a profession. So we have to understand what is a profession. A profession usually is a, a group of people that decide to say, okay, for people to be named as such, they belong and they agree to the practices of conducting business. This is very, very important to do so. Our, our profession is, uh, has its own uh, constraints. For example, an actuary should not be working on a commission basis. An actuary should have the ability to think independently, whether he is at risk of losing his job, of losing his contract, but he has to be an honest consultant or honest broker or honest uh, employee. So this is very important to realize what is a profession. Usually, for example, many, uh, many professions, they are allowed to make advertisement uh, for their services. You seldom see an actuary making advertisement for their services. You seldom see an actuary accepting a business in the last minute decision. So if a client come to you or an employer come to you and ask you to do something in the last minute, you have to think twice. Why is this coming all of a sudden? We should not work under pressure. We should really think properly of how we can uh, assume that, that task and give it all the uh, um, uh, the time needed to give the right advice. So it is very important to know this is the actuary. An actuary is not a mathematician. An actuary is not a demographer. An actuary is not an investment man. An actuary is not a lawyer. However, an actuary is all, all of the above. We have to be as actuaries to understand not only the risks that we are associated with, but also we have to understand the assets that are backing the risk. I give you a small example. Many years ago, there was an insurance company in Canada that had, if I remember right, had some assets of about $13 billion. Uh, so the company quite, quite solid. Its liability are only $11 billion. So they have more assets than liabilities. So the shareholders' equity is $2 billion. However, when the 
real estate market in Canada, in the States, in North America collapsed, they had around six or seven billion dollars in the real estate market, and the real estate market collapsed by 40, uh, 50%. So they lost 30 or 50% 50, uh, 50 of their uh, uh, asset base. Uh, uh, they lost uh, three or four billion dollars. So in principle, the eleven billion dollars, the thirteen billion dollars they had, went down to like ten billion, which in excess, uh, which is below their liability side. So their asset is not matching. So here, where the actuaries were at fault, they should have looked at to start with add the assets as well, and they should have put reserve on the on the valuation of the assets, not only valuation of the liability. So this is many, many things that uh, the profession is waking up to realize that we have a very big role to do as actuaries. Uh, I would like to mention that actuaries should not only respond to inquiries, actuaries should provoke questions because many clients, colleagues can, they will not maybe ask a question because they don't know that there is an answer for it. We have a responsibility to say to another person who is not an actuary, tell them, you know something, we can do this. Would you like to be done this? We should not only uh, re uh, respond to statutory requirement. Of course, there are requirements for an actuary evaluation of reserves, whether uh, for insurance companies or looking at the funding uh, level of a pension fund. That's fine, but we should go beyond because we know our skills. We know that we are able to analyze numbers correctly. Uh, I'll give you a small example. If you ask somebody, what is the average between, what's the average age between a man who is 20 and a man who is 40? And uh, anyone directly would say the average between 20 and 40, the average is 30. But an actuary shouldn't answer that. An actuary will say, why are you asking? Because if you are asking in the concept of mortality, then you will realize that the mortality, uh, the risk of dying at age 20 is by far lower than the risk of dying at age 40. So if you wait the probability of death of 20 and wait the probability of death at 40, and then you look at what would that uh, lead to, it may lead to an average age of 37 that have a combination of this. And if you are talking about life insurance and you realize that the person who is 20 may buy a mil, uh, 10 million or uh, uh, 50 million shilling insurance where the guy at 40 will be buying 50 million shilling of insurance, then you can see there is more weight on the 40 than the, uh, the 20, then all of a sudden, you will see that the average weighted average may be become 39. Uh, so any underwriter, when they are pricing a life insurance, a group insurance uh, for a company, should not ask the company, what is the average age of your employees so I can give you a price. And then you look at the rate, rate book and say, oh, the price of 35 is so much. You should take the numbers. You should apply some insured of the different category. You should apply the mortality at different risk. And then you should apply what is the output. And most likely, it will not be the arithmetic uh, average age. So these were actuaries are very important to question the questioner. So a person asking for something, you want to say, what is the ultimate reason you are asking this question? This is what differentiates us as actuary from a simple mathematician. Now, actuaries work. Now, I just gave you a simple example, life insurance, but uh, you know very well that actuaries work in general insurance and in pensions, social security, investment, healthcare, corporate financing, expert witness. Here, I'll give you a small example. Uh, about 25, 30 years ago, I was uh, asked to appear in court in America as an expert witness on discussing with the court on the appropriate mortality table used by the American Airlines in commuting the pension for the pilots on retirement. So actuaries are very well respected in their profession worldwide. So this is where you guys should be very proud that you are studying actuarial science. And of course, you know very well that right now the 
the industry in Tanzania is not very mature. Many of you are not really working. Uh, you will not be working really as actuaries. But if you continue to study while you are, whatever you are working, whether you are working for Vodacom or you are working for a bank, but you continue to study as actuarial to qualify, I will be talking about that in a second, then you can move into the second stage in the actuarial profession. Now, let's talk about the history of the profession. The actuarial profession is quite old, so we don't have to really go into the history, but it's very interesting that the name of the actuary, actuarius, was the name of the bookkeeper of the Roman Senate. So the word uh, actuary comes from a Latin a word who is the bookkeeper of the Senate in the Roman time at the Roman Empire, and he was the one that was trusted in uh, balancing all the budget in, in the Senate. Then the actuarial profession uh, evolved as over the years, and then in uh, 1895, which is over uh, 125 years ago, the International Actuarial Association was uh, uh, introduced. Now, in 1895, it was introduced by a, collect, a collection of individual actuaries. So when I joined the IAA in 1984, there were only individual actuaries in, in the IAA. After a few years, in 1998, uh, the actuary profession decided to move from a collection of individual actuaries to a group of association of actuaries. And this is one in 1998, the IAA be, uh, became one association or uh, in a way, a federation of associations. So an association of association allowing every country to have its own guidelines, everything, but they wanted to harmonize. But since that's the case, it's very difficult because we have the Anglo-Saxon world, you have the European world, you have the South American, and so on and so forth. There were very big difficulty to understand how we can move forward in harmonization. And at this stage, they put on the core syllabus, what would the minimum education requirement for somebody to be called an actuary. And this is one, the profession changed. And I'm very proud to say that today, the actuarial profession has over 75,000 actuaries in the world, and it is still growing. These are 75,000 qualified actuaries. They are equal, uh, almost 50,000 or more actuaries who are associate and students and in many developing countries. So you can see here, in 1998, when the profession uh, regrouped uh, itself, and if you notice, it was primarily in uh, North America, in South America, and in Europe. Uh, and then you can see the IAA didn't even exist anywhere. Certainly in the Soviet Union and Africa, there were no really actuarial profession uh, that can you talk about. So however, we are very proud to say that in 2021, uh, we have right now almost all over the world. However, unfortunately, when we celebrated on September 2nd this year, the day of the actuary, the International Day of the Actuary, I put on my LinkedIn that I am adamant as Ibrahim Muhanna to really help develop the actuarial profession in East Africa and particularly in particular. And uh, with your help, we would like to really have a vibrant actuarial profession. I do not look at that actuaries that are studying actuarial work, uh, they become competitor of ours. I started showing you that we do have our consulting practice as Mohanna and company. However, me, myself, I believe in education and I don't believe, I don't fear competition. I would rather see educated competitor than ignorant competitor. So this is where we like to invest in new guys to become actuaries, not necessarily work with us, maybe work against us, but at least we will need to have a proper format of education. And the only way that is, the only thing that is still missing in your formation is the issue of professionalism. There are courses within the International Actuarial Societies in the world that you have to take 
to become an actuary, you must pass an actuarial professionalism course, and I can talk to you about it later. So this is really the mission of the IAA. We have to develop the profession, and I am very much involved in the IAA, and we have to say we have to protect the public interest. So if I'm working for a pension fund, social security fund, and the government will come and say, oh, we want, I don't want to say they want us to cook the books, but they want us to say, okay, right now, are we okay right now? Uh, do we have enough money to pay for the next four or five years? Yes, you have money to pay for the next four or five year pension. You have money for the next 10, 15, 20 years to pay. But we have the obligation to tell them, if you don't look long term, the correction of the funding of this benefit will be extremely more difficult and the future generation will lose benefit and you cannot finance it. So we have obligation to think of the public interest and in long term, not on a short term basis. So uh, as a professional body, the IAA would say very important to look at the education, the core syllabus, and I will list right now the 10 uh, courses that must be the 10 subject that must be taught uh, to become an actuary, the concept of quality work, the issue of research, and the issue of professional guidance, and which is uh, very important. No association can become a full member of the IAA if it does not have a disciplinary code of conduct, disciplinary process and code of conduct. This is very, very important because Nobody, a third party will not be able to assess a job of an actuary if it's correct or not. Only an actuary can do it. So there is a big importance of the uh, actuarial society of Tanzania to play a role whereby this kind of uh, code of conduct is in place and to test the professionalism process. And because usually in a small association, the, the member, they know each other, we urge association to appoint honorary members who are not conducting business in, in that country, whereby we farm out, we tell these honorary members, if we have a dispute, if we have a problem, we will come back to you to tell us how to proceed. Because right now, when we are talking in Tanzania, we are all friends, we know each other. So it's very diff uh, difficult to discipline anybody or to assess a code uh, if somebody breached the code of conduct or not. So in the IAA, beside the associations who are members, and we have a good 70 associations who are member of the IAA, we have sections within the IAA where the members of the uh, sections are individuals. So if any actuary is interested in the work of non-life insurance, motor tarification, earthquake, earthquake research, uh, any kind of research other than life can join Aston. Aston is the oldest section in the IAA, even it, it existed before the new formation of the IAA. The French colleague started the, a fear section, which is the financial risk, saying actuaries have a big role in the banking sector and the financial risk section a fear started. Uh, IACA is also a section, the consulting actuary also predates the IAA formation. Health section, I'm very proud to say it was me who uh, came to the IAA and said that we should have a section for health actuaries. And at that time, I found a big resistance because the actuarial work in the health industry was done either by life insurance actuaries or by non-life insurance actuaries. I was insisting that to be a health actuary, to be a solid sound health actuary, you have to understand non-life insurance, you have to understand life insurance, and you have to understand pension insurance, uh, pension actuarial work. And why? because healthcare, it is correct, it has a high, uh, a high uh, frequency, low severity risk, very similar to motor insurance. Yes, a motor actually can look at healthcare and try to about pricing and funding. However, some health products have some kind of guaranteed of renewability. So having guaranteed of renewability, that is the same concept like providing life insurance, we have a fixed price, 
and then you guarantee renewability, uh, which is not available in motor insurance because non-life is known to be short-term business, even in the license of insurance company that are licensed to conduct business, many jurisdiction, they label the insurance company. This company is licensed to write short-term business, and this company is the license to write long-term business. Medical insurance in the past has been under the short-term business until recently when they start providing guarantees. Since they are talking about long-term guarantees, really it should go to the long-term business because the reserving and the pricing different. I even add to that by saying, since we are providing healthcare after retirement, and you very well know healthcare costs increase, in, increase tremendously after retirement, and the purchasing power of the retiree decreases after the age of retirement, how can a person fund his health care at age of 70? The cost is high, his income is low. I came with the idea that you need to do pre-funding for health care after retirement. And what is that? This is pension. So I'm very happy to say about 10 years ago, a little bit more, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, finally, the, the IAA accepted the introduction of the health sector. And now we have a health sector. We also have a pension and social security sector section, and we have a life section. So uh, to be a member of the IAA, as we mentioned, there were very clear uh, uh, setup, and I will be showing you right now the syllabus that we are talking about. And the most important thing that the IAA every now and then issue standard of practice and uh, we will uh, share with you. It is all available on uh, free of uh, uh, available for the public on the website of the IAA. That again, I will share with you shortly. The code, which is divided in two, I would like to read that. This is very important. Perform services with integrity. This is very important. But integrity by itself is not enough. You have to have the skill. So if you, any of you have heard the word fit and proper that is used in appointment of uh, board members of companies or board member of pension funds, fit and proper is very important term to I say somebody is fit and he's proper. So to be fit is not enough, to be proper is not enough, you have to be fit and proper. And here in the code of the IA, we have to have the integrity, but at the same time, we need to have the skill because if you have smart, but you can be a thief, but also you can be honest and you can be dumb. So it's very important to be smart and at the same time, you have to be honest. So this is the issue of, uh, of the uh, code of conduct that we have to do because any number we can say could be misleading. Here, I'll give you a small story and could be, uh, it may make you a little bit a small joke. Uh, some, uh, one day, somebody was crossing a river and uh, before crossing a river, he saw somebody coming out of the river on the other side. So he yelled to the other guy, he said, how deep is the river? So the other guy that's getting out of the river, he said, it is about 1.5 meters. So the guy who's crossing the river, the newly guy who asked the question is 1.8 meters. He said, oh, I don't know how to swim, but I'm 1.8. I can walk across the river and my head be above the water. As he approached almost the middle of the river, he started to drown. He stopped and he started yelling at the guy. He said, you said it's only 1.5 meters. And the guy said, I forget to tell you, it is on the average 1.5 meter. So, here you realize one word, one word, misled somebody else. He didn't tell him it's on the average 1.5 meter. Some places it's two meters or three meters. So this is something very important in the actual profession. We have to be specific and we cannot joke about it. We cannot mislead. He is accurate. He said 1.5, but he didn't say this is the average. He didn't say this is the deepest and so on and so forth. So we have whoever become an actuary, he cannot become an actuary today, graduating from university, and he's an actuary for life. 
you have to have continuous education. You have to work on. We are regulated by processes. We are governed by procedures. And there are always changes. So there is continuous education process that a person has to go by and have to adhere to it. And I hope the Actuarial Society of Tanzania will be making a bigger stride in moving forward by talking to the students as to how we can hold your hand to become a qualified actuary. Now, we talk about qualification. Unfortunately, there is misperception about qualification. In the colonial era, primarily the British, the Americans, they came and provided actuarial services in the Anglo-Saxon world. And who came to provide is a qualified actuary, either from the Society of Actuary of America or the Institute of Actuary in the UK. When he was asked or she was asked by the regulator, what is an actuary? They told them, you have to be a fellow of the Institute or do you have to be fellow of the Society of Actuary? So unfortunately, they put that in the regulation in the requirement to become an actuary or to be assigning actuary for any kind of reserving an insurance or kind of funding for a pension fund. By this way, they have discounted almost half the actuaries in the world who are not fellows of the Society of Actuary, who are not fellows of the Institute of Actuary. However, they are equally very important, if not even more important as actuaries in the world but he studied in Switzerland or France or Spain or Mexico or Brazil, who have what we call university system. Now, what happened when the IAA was uh, reconstituted, we realized that there are actuaries in Italy are well published, extremely good actuaries, but they are not fellows of the Institute of Actuary or the society. So the local society said to themselves, Oh, the only difference we as local society we have from the other American and the British society is the course, which is really professionalism. At the university, they were teaching very good. They were graduating good actuaries. However, the local association of actuaries, they said, OK, you are studying actuarial science in the University of Lausanne in Switzerland. That's fine. However, to join the membership, then you have to take one more exam, which really, which is professionalism, which now we are at par with the Society of Actuary and everything. And this is very, very important to look at. And also the local association took over from the, from the university, said, OK, now you graduated these students. Now they join our association. Now they are, have to continue uh, continuous education development within our own society to maintain to maintain their credentials as member of our society. So this is the uh, what is happening in the concept uh, of professionalism. Let me see where I am. I don't know if I'm running out of my time. Uh, uh, Akida, let me know. I tend to talk a lot. Uh, okay. Anyway, we started 10 minutes late, so I think we can easily extend our time a little bit more. So uh, just here to show you, roughly speaking, some figures, there are almost 50% of actuaries in the world working for insurance companies and the other 50% working for consulting companies. And the other remaining percentages really are working throughout the different industries. This is uh, in Tanzania, I know for a fact, the banking sector is hiring many students, but only, uh, not only, mainly the banking sector as high, hiring actual students, the ones that have insurance products like, uh, but they are not hiring them in other uh, assignments, which is the IFRS 9 uh, on the risk ass assessment and so, so forth. Uh, in, uh, uh, sorry, uh, this is uh, this, uh, the slide is small. Uh, in the world, if we count the total number of actuaries and we divide them in the total uh, workforce in the world, we realize for every 1 million active person, there are about 16 actuaries in the Western world. In the developing nations, there are four actuaries for every 1 million in the developing, in the employed in the world. 
in the Arab world and in Africa, there is less than point, less than quarter of a person. So that is a shame. That tells you there is a lot of uh, potential of uh, actuarial penetration in these countries. Uh, the last few slides, I'm uh, telling you also uh, countries where by, by law require actuarial work uh, causes the actuarial profession to evolve. Countries that don't have actuarial uh, specified in the law and does not define the actuary in the law, then actuaries don't evolve quite a bit. Uh, I did mention the, sub, the concept of public interest. This is very, very, very important. And this is the pride of the actuary profession, whereby we as actuary should walk away if anything is asked of us that is not of the public interest, or if we have the guts, we should speak out on anything that we believe is outside the public interest. And uh, one of the things that we would like to talk about uh, when we talk about profession, there are many times where, where an actuary make a mistake. Uh, many times projects that are beyond an actuary's capability. This is where a person should really be proud enough to say, I need help. I, it is beyond myself. Or I know it, but I don't have the, enough time to do it. So this is where you have to work with other people and you have to seek support and you have, I know for a fact that uh, there are uh, uh, actually without borders are trying to uh, provide mentors for actuaries in Africa to support them uh, in answering many, many questions as well. I, I spoke a little bit here uh, earlier about that different type of education level uh, okay, these are the uh, core syllabus of the actual profession. And if you notice that professionalism was added, I also wanted to add uh, uh, two more courses. I want to do, uh, actually to take uh, law courses and to take communication courses. Because uh, in my uh, experience, if you have a great actuary, that does not know how to communicate his findings. It's very dangerous. You need to have a, you need to have good communication skills to be successful, actually, because you are talking most of the time to non-actuaries. If you are employed by a company, your actual report has to go to your manager or to the board, and it shouldn't be just numbers, numbers, numbers. You should write to them in in a language that they can understand. Another thing, actuarial work is not addition of numbers and subtraction of numbers. Actuarial work is governed by a legal document, whether it's a life insurance product or other contracts. It means they actually have to understand, have to read the contract and to see what is the coverage needed. Is the coverage needed to have exemption period, have the coverage period. So you have to really have a legal mind to be successful actually in all, whether life or pension or non-life. So uh, in uh, conclusion, I will uh, uh, sp uh, stress again the characteristic of uh, actuarial standards of practice. And this is spelled out uh, just to let you know the uh, constitution of the actual society of Tanzania contains a very clear code of conduct uh, section and disciplinary process as well. Okay. Uh, here I wanted to uh, tell you, uh, uh, just to give you a small example, in Tanzania, anybody graduating from university should not accept to start their salary less than a minimum of $500 uh, per month, which is a little bit over a million shilling. Uh, the reason I say that is because that person should value the profession. I, I, I accept the fact when somebody said, I don't have experience, I don't have enough internship, I'm willing to start, but I will want to prove myself and my salary goes up. I hope 
uh, I will work closely with your association to figure out what are the uh, going uh, salary scale of actuaries in Tanzania so we can educate employers to have that entry level of actuaries to have a good salary that they can demand. And then as they qualify, the salary should go up and up as they go along. The last uh, slide that I have uh, for you here is the different sites that I urge you to visit is uh, beanactuary.org is very helpful, easy, friendly site and actuaries.org, which is the uh, uh, site of the International Actuary Association. And of course, without saying is to see, uh, to look at the site of Mohanna Foundation. So in short, if I want to conclude, uh, what is an actuary? Actuaries are a multi-skilled strategic thinkers trained in the theory and application of math mathematics, statistics, and economics, probability of, of and finance. They have been called financial architects and social mathematicians. This is, uh, I stress, social mathematicians, not mathematicians, because of their unique combination of analytical business skills are used to understand the growing variety of financial and social, ch uh, social challenges worldwide. So I thank you, and I leave the floor to Akida to conduct the question and answer from the site. Thank you very much. Uh, I would like to recognize the presence of Dr. Choa, Dr. Taunaziso Choa, and uh, please, for the next five minutes, I hope you have something to speak about what Mr. Mohana has already spoken. Would you please share with us what your thoughts are about actuarial science and professionalism? Dr. Choa, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, I would like to actually just say, I think the it's good to to get to know more about the the, the the contributions and how the profession has shaped up. And it's very important when we hear from someone who has been part of it and someone who has really seen how the profession has been over the years. So I would like to just acknowledge uh, the maybe the presence of the emerging fields where actually your skills can be applied, uh, big data that are coming up. And I would like to say, I think actually your profession has developed and has been able to adapt to the various, uh, you know, developments in the, as members evolve and go into new fields, uh, the actuarial profession has also uh, developed more into that. Uh, I look at example of how the banking, actuaries in banking have evolved in South Africa and how now we are looking at big data and uh, machine learning issues. And to me, I think uh, there are a lot of things where actuaries can add value, being masters or being good stewards in public interest. I think actuaries can do more in banking and especially in regulation, uh, both not just insurance, but also in the banks. So I see actuaries also doing more in the future because our world is becoming digital. And uh, I think you can not, the, 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 where the statistics are will actually be more where the data is so we 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 really I actually think in uh, the actuaries is really in uh, in the next few years we should see more actuaries being involved more in the distribution channels in the digital uh, distribution of insurance and to, to see how uh, actuaries will be able to put those things together. So I think the demands of your profession has more IT now to oil them. Yes, you have the skills, you have the strategic, you're analytical, but I think as an actuary, you should never close yourself to say, I am going to be in life because it's the same place you'll be in life, you find that you need to interact with the, a different channel, for example. So I would like to, to just say, uh, it's a wonderful presentation. I have learned a lot and uh, I think the future of the actuarial profession, as you have seen it evolve from the days when they had health and care coming on board, there are a lot of other things that I think will come on board as long as they bring us to be more uh, suited social mathematicians, if I would say. 
Oh, so I, I appreciate that. Uh, thanks, Akida. I appreciate uh, and I'm happy that uh, uh, you have this uh, wonderful privilege to be with, uh, with Ms. Muhana, uh, who I highly esteem. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Shawa. Uh, I would like uh, to uh, add, inform everybody that it is not necessary for each one of you to pursue actuarial exam for qualification in the society or in the factory. However, I urge all of you, if you want to be called actuaries, to join the Society of Actuaries of Tanzania. As a student of actuaries and with experience, you will qualify to become an associate actuary. You don't really need to sit for exam to become fellows. Uh, however, if any of you intends and inspires, aspires to become a qualified actuary, to be assigning actuaries for the insurance industry in Africa, most unfortunately, most regulators require qualification as a fellow to sit for exams to become a fellow of the society or the fellow of the institute. If that is your intention to become really a qualified actuary, I urge you to start taking actuarial exams while you are still students because you will be in the mood of studying or sitting for exams. I am on your behalf talking to both the society and the NGO factory to change two things if I can. One, to lower down the fees because we know very well that the fees for the exams are very high. And this is beyond the economic means of students in Africa. The second thing we are trying to say, all of us, including myself, English is not our mother tongue. I read English slower than a Brit or an American reading English. So we are trying to say an exam that's three hours should be three and a half hours for a non-English speaking student. This is only fair. And especially you all know that the exams are graded in scale. It is very difficult for non-English speaking student to pass exams even when we pass them, we could have passed them in higher grades if English was our first language. So these are things I promise you that I will try to work very hard to help the actual students in Africa for those who he wants to qualify uh, as fellows of the Institute or the society. However, I'm for inclusion, not because you did not qualify for fellowship, it means you are not valuable. We have on our staff, people who chose not to take exams. However, they, we as a company, we cannot live without them. I can tell you right now, Ryan is sitting among us. Ryan decided not to continue to take exams. However, her actuarial techniques is valuable for us. She is not uh, concerned about, oh, Marinus is gonna sign her work. Her work is, she is doing all the work. A fellow actuary in the company is signing her work. So she doesn't really mind. She did not want to take exam. So I'm saying, if you decide not to take an exam, that's fine. However, you should join an actuary society and you believe in the discipline and the code of conduct and the procedure we go along with this profession. This is where I urge you guys. And this is what I hope I can get the society of actuary uh, Akida, when he was mentioning that I'm a fellow of the Institute of Action in the UK and Lebanon and Cyprus and Switzerland, he did not mention that I'm a fellow of the Tanzanian Actuarial Society as well. So I'm very proud and I have to speak for your future to put the, the society in order. I noticed that you as student members in graduating, you are more active than the society. This is a shame. And I say it out loud, and uh, not uh, not uh, just to please you. I've said this to Sadi. I've said this to your colleagues, the, you, the leaders of the profession. I said not because you qualified and you're happy, you should forget or of the student. You should help them, and I'm here to help you, and I will fight to support you. I think. Your professor, whether in IFM or University of Tulsa, are doing superb job to give you the education you need. However, you are left in the dark once you graduate. 
we have as a professional body we have the obligation to help you in continuous education and to provide you with the guidelines of code of conduct and professionalism okay thank you uh, i wanted to say thank you very much uh, miss mana for highlighting this we have seen this happening especially when the switch to exams to being online because of the pandemic and uh, we have actually seen that uh, it has become so difficult for our students, especially when you come to the issue of typing exams. So the number of people who are sitting for exams uh, across most of the countries that I interact with, Zimbabwe, Zambia, uh, you know, you have seen that the numbers have gone down. Why? Because they cannot, it's not easy to type fast when you have not grown up in the environment that promotes such. So we really need uh, something. And uh, I think it will be very important if uh, from such a, a level of experience and, and uh, respect that you have in the profession, if you take it up, I think we can have something, an adjustment that can be made towards uh, promoting the development of actuarial profession in Africa. Uh, among the categories or types of actuaries that one can be, uh, which type of actual would you advise for the for this particular region of us, the Eastern Africa, especially uh, among many other types? Should people engage themselves in the pension, in the general insurance, life insurance, considering the demand, uh, first limiting to our region, but also globally? What would you advise people to become? What, what type of actuals would you advise people to become? Uh, as far as what do we advise, uh, uh, actuaries uh, in, in Tanzania in particular, uh, because of the limited number of pension funds in the region in Tanzania, you know, as you well know, there are primarily four funds right now in Tanzania between NSSF, uh, PSSSF, WHF, uh, and uh, NSS, uh, NHIF. Uh, so these are the four funds, and even if each one of them has a good actuarial department of four or five actuarial staff on it, so you are talking about maximum capacity in this uh, company, this organization is about hiring of 20 actuaries. On the other hand, there are over 20 insurance companies in, the, uh, in Tanzania, and each one of them should have actuarial uh, department, and especially with the new IFRS 17 requirement and uh, all the uh, new statutory requirement and also TIRA requiring uh, qualified actuaries to, uh, to do some work. I think there is more opportunity in the insurance business than in the pension at this stage. However, I came across uh, recently that there are actually are working in the banking sector in Tanzania and your colleague a couple of months ago, he made a presentation about the importance of an actuary in the financial sector. So that's also uh, important. That doesn't mean that there are no work. We know for a fact, I remember three, four years ago, uh, Vodacom was hiring a lot of actuarial graduates. Now, I did mention, uh, getting out of the traditional actuarial work and going somewhere else does not mean a person's getting out of the profession. They are, they are hired because of the actuarial skills. They are not probably signing reserving. However, they are pricing risk. They are doing manipulation of numbers. So there are chances for actuaries to work in many, many fields. If somebody wants to pursue pure actuarial in the traditional world, whether, whether insurance or pension or uh, you know, pure actuarial work, there is nothing wrong with that. A person can pursue that. And of course, you know, there are two types of uh, jobs for actuary. You can work for the industry, it means you work for the employer, or you can work for the consultant, whereby you provide services to employers. Or nothing uh, more gratifying than going to academia. Uh, if somebody likes to share knowledge, there is no reason whatsoever than becoming a part-time uh, tutoring or uh, teaching, or I don't know what are the requirements to be, uh, if somebody at heart like, uh, like to share their knowledge, like uh, we have with us uh, two professors, full-time professors uh, uh, online, Dr. Badran and Dr. Shoa, uh, they are 
they are academics. They like teaching, uh, and uh, but we know the current uh, the current uh, commissioner of students is an ex, uh, ex academic. So uh, there is a very interesting uh, com uh, transition from academic back to the commercial world. So uh, I leave it up to the person to figure out what they do. Uh, I promise you, inshallah, I'll be uh, in Dar after one month from today. Uh, if uh, it all goes well, I will coordinate with the uh, Akida face-to-face uh, -face meeting. I've been to IMF a couple months ago and <clears throat> I'll do it. But next time I do it, I would like to do it through the AST through the actual society of Tanzania, because we need this body to become the catalyst for all of you to hold your hand and help you through. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your answers. I think there's a there's question. A question, dropped, Akida, uh, on the line. Uh, does the Mohanna Foundation uh, train actuarial exams? We, are, we had uh, on our website, if somebody look at it, we had that in the past. We will be instituting a new uh, program whereby can people uh, prescribe, uh, uh, subscribe to uh, a training for actuarial exams, but I leave it up to Dr. Badran or my, my colleague on the foundation to communicate with you once that's announced. Hello, how are you? Yes. Hi. Uh, may you please have, uh, may you please pick up on Mr. Taona's social request on typing. It was very critical to, because uh, here in Africa, we are having challenges and uh, responding to an actual exams, uh, because the speed in typing is a very, very, very difficult thing here in Africa because of uh, our conditions, how we are brought up in our education system. So may you please kindly do something on this one, or if you can comment on it because the, it's really a challenge for, for because it's more like um, you write an exam, you fail to finish the exam, but you know the content. B you cannot beat the time because of typing. Uh, I will uh, I will discuss this at the level of the AST as well as the student uh, group uh, to get a maybe we need a written mandate whereby we communicate with the leadership of the IAA to speak to the other associations whereby I mentioned, uh, lower the fees and the other thing to allow more time for the exams. So at this juncture, I'd like to thank everybody uh, for joining us today. And uh, sorry, I took you away from uh, a day of holiday, public holiday, but uh, uh, this is the only timing we were able to set up uh, for this event. Uh, wish you a nice day and thank you Akida for uh, organizing it and thank you Dr. Showa for joining and I look forward to see if not all of you some of you when I do visit Tanzania next month. Before ending the session I would like to extend my gratitude and say that we are very happy and thank you so much for joining us and helping us uh, to have the insights and understand very well all about actuarial science. I hope it has been a very wonderful session to everybody, but uh, I would also like to let everybody know that this is the series of webinar sessions that has will be held monthly. Uh, that means every month we shall have one webinar sessions from different people. And it's been a very great thing to have Mr. Mohana uh, launch this session to us all. I thank them for joining us and enjoy the great day. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. On behalf of us, I really like to appreciate all who have attended. And this is just the start. We'll be having a series of other events, not only webinars. We'll be having workshops and other events, which I hope all of us will participate fully. The next thing I want to welcome all the professionals, people who have already gotten far in this profession to help us in nurturing the students so that we can achieve what we first thought when we chose this actual profession. And also, on behalf of TAS, I'd like to welcome the people from the DOMA who are not members of TAS now to be finally the members of TAS. And making it 
three universities in Tanzania providing the actual studies. And last but not the least, a student, I mean, not a student, as actuaries, as Mr. Mohan has said, that it's a very, very good profession and we should not fear, but have the courage to pursue our studies and later on in the future, we can become qualified actors. Thank you. I go by the names of Prochesius Ngaiza, an actuarial student from University of Dodoma and the president of UDAS, the so-called University of Dodoma Actuarial Student Society. Well, participating in this webinar has been a pleasure to all of us, the students, actuarial students from various universities such as IFM, Udoma and Hidism, and it has been a, quite a reason, reasonable and good time for us to get the experience and interact with the professionals about several things and experience they have about the actuarial profession. Well, personally, I would recommend each and every student to participate in these seminars to gain more experience and to learn from different professionals. I am Alhaida Ali Anisi Pomeru, an actuarial science student at the Institute of Finance Management, but also the president of the Institute of Finance Management Student Organization. Well, I'm very happy that today we had a wonderful time with Mr. Mohana, a well-experienced actuary, alongside other professionals as Dr. Chowa and others. It has been a pleasure for all of us to learn, get experience, and get to learn on the path that we are taking as actuarial science students in Tanzania, so as we could in one way or another be having a head start on the path that we are taking and we are going to embark on the next five to ten years to help our region our country and the world as professionals and certified actuaries. Thank you and I'd like to welcome everyone to the Institute of Finance Management. You're welcome. Okay, so on behalf of IASA, as the General Secretary, we like to thank Mr. Mohana for sharing with us and as our former president, Akida, started this and initiated this, we hope to take this to the next level. We hope to make more events like this for the growth of Acturio. And as a student, I would also like to encourage people to study and not just get the degree but also do the professional exams so that they can be professional. So yes, that's all. Thank you so much Mr. Mohana. We have really started well with Mr. Mohana, hoping to have more professionals addressing different topics and learning a lot. Uh, the real purpose is to uh, learn, network, as well as getting exposure in our actuarial field and professional at large. Thank you very much.